opponent's eyes before a fight, he says, because hey, he then hey, might take cameras, pity on them. The you ever heard anything like that, George? Yeah, you got to be careful watching these guys, look in the eyes. If you're a nice guy, they can pull one on you, and you feel canvas. sorry for them too it. soon. Hey, I understand that. Wants to fight there? like them? Doesn't want to feel a moment of humanity before it. I don't know if the humanity oh, oh, yeah. God's down. would appear to have the skill and the quickness that Rivera probably is the strongest of the fight he's fought so far. De La Hoya with a big contrast in trunk length is much shorter than Rivera's. Rivera wearing that NBA style. That is old style trunks, George. You don't see that much more. Yeah, I like that though. It looked like an athlete. The long trunks make you look like some granddaddy. Rivera trying to establish his jab in the first round. Oscar De La Hoya kind of feeling Rivera out. Starts off with a left hook. Wilfredo Rivera has a habit of coming straight forward with his chin up, and Oscar De La Hoya's people are hoping that he'll take advantage of that with power punching. De La Hoya, you want to be able to land the first left jabs yourself now. He's allowing Rivera to start out with left jabs. That can change things. Right hand lead over the top for De La Hoya. Didn't land flushed, but certainly got Rivera's attention. Rivera throws a lot of jabs, throws a lot of punches in general. Was able to do so against Whitaker. Might not be able to do so quite as well against De La Hoya because of the incoming. You want the guy starts off jabbing you, you gotta stop, lose your concentration, and go back to establishing your jab. De La Hoya does not want to do that net tonight. So you better keep your jab going for the first two or three rounds. Year began with Oscar De La Hoya trying to take Miguel Angel Gonzalez's head off with jabs. Here in the first round of this fight, his fifth and last of 19 he Rivera do the jabbing and looking to count with power punches. Yeah, and that's what happened with young fighters. You want to establish your left jab. Well, Rivera's did something, has done something very smart. Which is? He started with his left jab. De La Hoya started off fainting, fainting. No, you want to say, the fight's got to start, I'll start first. Rivera trying a tentative right, De La Hoya blocking it with his left glove. Oscar seemingly willing to allow Rivera to take the lead and look for his chances to counter. Now De La Hoya gets his jab working and lands a right hand over the top of R Rivera's jab. Rivera dropped his left hand, Oscar led with the right. Now runs back with his own jab three times. Well, you got to give a success to Rivera because De La Hoya did not want to start jabbing at this point. Now he's having to do it out of necessity. Round one coming to a close. Lead right hand by Oscar De La Hoya. He's thrown four lead right hands in the first round, and they were by and large his most effective punches. As we go to the corner between rounds, Spanish may be spoken in either one, and our interpreter in both is Hector Garcia. Moving your head a little more. And work on the jab a little more, too. Just move, move, more, circle, jump, side to side, side to side, okay? It's just busy with the jump, don't wait for the guy, you gotta be first, all right? When he goes down, hit him with that right hand. But you gotta use, you have to establish your jab. The jab on up on top. You, you, this is a good round for you, round for you. And keep working that jab. You have the chance. Go to the part. Round one of Rivera against De La Hoya. Similar in CompuBox punch stat numbers to the early rounds of Rivera Whitaker in the sense that Rivera threw 74 punches, 30 more than De La Hoya threw. But De La Hoya landed 21 to 17 for Rivera. Rivera is sticking the jab out there, not really landing it most of the time, just keeping it out there in De La Hoya's face. Now, De La Hoya's smart. Sometimes you wait too long, and this is when you need a Gil Clancy around who has to jump up and say, get off. Don't wait for this guy. Gil Clancy is the best at that. We heard the instructions from Alcazar, and I'm sure that was after consultation with Clancy because, in fact, 
the lawyer had said before the fight that he wanted to use his jab a lot. There must be some reason he may be finding it hard to get off with it. Is there some technical reason I don't well, a fighter, a fighter, you know, fishes don't swim well from one coast to the, to the other. He's on the East Coast now, and it'll take a moment to get yourself adjusted. Left hook by De La Hoya landed on Rivera's face. I just have the sense, guys, that he's willing to let Rivera lead because he thinks the counterpunching opportunities are going to be rich and ripe. And you don't want to be a counterpuncher with uh, Rivera. You want to start the fight and finish the fight. Rivera lands a right hand to the top, continues to stick his jab. De La Hoya continues to throw considerably fewer punches than does Wilfredo Rivera. Looks to land big shots. And there's a big shot. Thunderbolt left hook. Punching Del Arsenal. Now the left jab of De La Hoya is starting to be effective. right hands were landed behind the head. Now the referee has got to be careful. Oscar wanted to launch a right hand in close there. Pulled it back when Rivera moved his head. Rivera doesn't have a ton of head movement, but he can slip it just at the right moment from time to time. Left quickly blocked. And this one lands. De La Hoya may not have looked Rivera in the eye before the fight. He certainly has his eyes laser beamed on him right now. Left hook lands and wobbles Rivera. De La Hoya follows up with artillery. Wilfredo Rivera, tough kid, smiles as if to say, hey, I can take your stuff, but he won't want to take too many like that. Blood next to the right eye of Rivera, I believe. Now you have to thank him by De La Hoya. Took again, followed by a right cross. Rivera is just allowing him to land too many left hooks. Remember how quickly De La Hoya was able to cut Chavez? I think he has cut Rivera next to the right eye in much the same way. That's going to be too big. It's too big. I can't let that go. This fight may be if we're listening to the doctor correctly. to watch it carefully Cortez told us that it was a motion to us that it was a left hook that opened the eye definitely it was that rifle shot left hook that sizzled next to the eye of Rivera and has opened a big gash he did it against Chavez he's done it again George Foreman when a man is able to cut somebody that big with one punch that's power right that's a lot of but the most he's accurate and the speed is there it takes a lot of speed to get a cut not so much power same punch same target. Rivera's probably going to have to cut loose. Hard to imagine he can go very far in this fight with a cut as big as the one that now rests next to his right eye. Rivera had no idea that De La Hoya punches that hard. You don't believe it until you feel it. You know, his but, speed with the left hook is just blinding. But, you know, it, it, well, everything these guys say is true. Good right hand right by Rivera right there and another one. But the, the cut doesn't seem to be, the blood doesn't be, seem to be flowing into his eye. I don't see where the danger is at this moment. I wondered about that also, why the, the doctor would say such. Well, well, maybe Rivera's corner can sell that case from round to round. Oscar seems willing to take it and just look for another chance to land the left hook. Yeah, he's throwing like many punches. He's like the matador now. He knows that that barrel has been stuck. Now you just wait and press on it and press on it until he drops his hand a little bit and you go for it again. Landed 22 power punches and in round and two. And Rivera has switched to southpaw right here. Yep, Rivera switches to southpaw. Can he protect the eye better from this stance, George? Well, he can confuse Oscar De La Hoya for a second, but he can't protect the eye. As a matter of fact, 
Delahoy is well acquainted with Southpaws. Yeah, that's right. Delahoy has had two long tours of duty against Southpaws this year and showed dramatic improvement between his outing against Brunel Whitaker and the later one against Hector Macho Camacho. Of course, Camacho's not as good as Whitaker. And a good amateur experience in international boxing matches. And now Rivera switches back to his conventional stance. I think Delahoy is showing very good patience here. The eye is there. It'll, if, if the fight goes on, things will take care of himself, not exposing himself to any danger he doesn't have to. No reason for him to take any risks at this point. He's got Rivera exactly where he wants it. But on the other hand, he's, Rivera is staying right in there with him and feels that he can now defend himself. And Rivera switches back to the southpaw stance, and you saw how he can only call with the left hand. He can't fight powerfully out of this stance because he does not throw the left hand with authority. Good hard left hand to the chest there. Right hand over the top by De La Hoya. Round three comes to a close. And he may have bought himself more time with that round, Rivera. Now you got to keep that hit still. Excuse me. You work real good in that round. You have to use those hands a little bit more often. You're not working that left hand. You got to go to that body. Here we are in the second round trying to catch the, the blow that caused that cut. It was that left uppercut hook right on the point of the corner of the eye. Yep. Comes at a kind of a three-quarter angle. I call it the hooker cut. Oh, seconds out. He's seconds hurt a lot out. of opponents with that. Rivera has bought himself more time. Through rounds three, or through three rounds, I should say, De La Hoya throwing only 48 punches down, but most of them power shots. Rivera throwing an average of 67 punches around, but the number's dropping as he goes from round to round. Fourth round begins. Oscar pawing at his own nose with the right hand. Rivera back in his conventional stance, switched twice to the southpaw stance in the third round. Right hand over the top for Rivera, willing to be aggressive. He can't just let Oscar come to him with that cut over the eye. a little trickle for his trouble. Hard left hook. hand by Rivera. Rivera short with the right hand, keeps sticking the jab. Great credit to Rivera for his sense of tactics, his ability to think in there even though the cut has put him in some trouble, and his willingness to try to keep dishing against Oscar De La Hoya. De La Hoya has to be careful. Once he gets close enough, you got to throw punches. You just can't get close and look. And that's what Rivera is doing, allowing him to get close, let him throw shots himself. Rivera's right hand wandered twice. De La Hoya landed two more left hooks as a result. Right uppercut for De La Hoya. Kind of pause with the left hook. Rivera keeps trying to land that straight jab and keep De La Hoya off him when he can. No real body attack from either man so far. With Rivera focusing on protecting his face at this moment, George, might be a good moment for him to start thinking of the ribcage. Yeah, Oscar started off in the first round fainting to the body. You know, guy, you have to throw some punches down to the body to make him aware that you will hit him. Another solid left hook up top by De La Hoya in that exchange, and now he lands another one. He is tattooing Wilfredo Rivera in close and from range with the left hook. Landed a right uppercut, solid punch, and another right puts Rivera down. I believe Rivera was hurt by a punch, oh, four or five punches before the, knock, the knockdown. De La Hoya sensed it and came in to finish him, as he is here. I got a couple when you're an experienced fight.
fighter like Rivera, every punch has to be measured and accurate. And Rivera makes it out of the fourth, but he was knocked down for the second time in his career, once by Whitaker in their second fight, and now by De La Hoya. And they both winked at each other as the round ended. <laughs> How do you feel now? Okay, okay, me refer, you, you don't keep it up for the health, eh? No quiero que coja golpe necesariamente, okay? Quiero que te defiendas, si no te defiendas. Get me back to lean. A la salina. Si no te defiendas bien, tengo que parar la pelea. That may have been the punch there, that left hook that you saw, that may have softened them up. How about that? And that one sent him to the canvas. Right now, George, it doesn't look like a third championship is going to change hands tonight. Well, mm -hmm. let's wait and see. Rivera is game. He's solid. He's been outclassed once or twice before. Round five begins. Wilfredo Rivera's continued participation in the bout, obviously in question. You saw Dr. Howard Taylor in his corner between rounds again. Harold Letterman, how'd you score the first four? Jim, 40 to 35, four rounds to nothing. Oscar De La Hoya. Jim, I gotta say something. In that blue corner, you got two real pros. Number one, Dr. Howard Taylor. There are doctors and there are boxing doctors. This guy's a boxing doctor. He knows what to stop it. And number two, Percy Richardson doing a great job on that cut. But you gotta score for the power punching of Oscar De La Hoya. He's doing the damage. I, I have it three rounds to one. I thought that uh, Rivera eked out the first round, but obviously, round for De La Hoya in the last round. And De La Hoya missing with a furious left hook over the top there, but now he lands another left hook, and that backs Rivera out of there, and another left hook as Rivera looking for some space to move backward again. And Rivera's vision has now begins to get solid left jab. Boy, that's a beauty, isn't it? Oh, you're something you're just not going to see every day. I love a left jab that makes the guy back away. Well, the way he threw it early in the year against Miguel Angel Gonzalez was textbook stuff. And Oscar's a little bit different tactically every time out. And those kind of left jabs, it affects your back. Not only does it knock your head back, but your back gets sore during the fight. Now, I remember Floyd Patterson trying to stretch his back in the late rounds against Muhammad Ali. Because Ali of the good left jab. The jab. Yeah. Good, quick, short left inside by Deloy. Very few body punches in this fight, but good there's one right there. Oscar's smart. He throws that left hook, makes the guy aware that he hit him in the body, then he goes back up into the head, then finishes down in the body again. Well, if Rivera's going to keep his right hand guard the cut next to his eye, then that leaves the rib cage open for the left hook to the body, which is a major Delaware weapon when he remembers to throw it. Oh, watch your head, watch your head. Come on, keep going, watch your head. Let's go. Come hook on, to the body. Shot, Oscar seemed to hurt his hand slightly with that one. Yeah, it was down a little lower around those cups. Those cups can hurt you when you land a shot down low. Hip bone doesn't feel too good either. Yeah, but it, it affects your hand a lot more than your hip bone. Rivera switched his southpaw again. Yeah, whenever he's hurt, he looks out for himself. But when he switches to southpaw, he puts that eye closer to De La left. Of course, the shoulder and the position of the stance helps to neutralize the left hook a little bit. Costco, like I said, he's pretty smart. And here's the ring. I, I wonder about this ring getting out of the control here, the bottom of it. De La Hoya dominating that round. Rivera with fewer and fewer answers as the rounds go by. Keep working on that, Percy. You do a good job. You have to keep, you have to protect yourself. You have to do whatever it takes to protect yourself. He's tired. You have to keep, keep those hands up and keep using that jab. 
You have to oh, applaud all of the professionals up. in Rivera's seconds corner, corner. corner, how they're handling this situation, including Rimo, Rimo. Dr. Howard Taylor. Everybody is right on top of it. It's good to see. And as Harold Letterman pointed out, Percy Richardson, one of the half dozen or so world-class cut men in the sport, but with a very difficult job tonight. But he's doing a fine job. One of Philadelphia's, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, Percy can do it. Brader Rivera, never a victim, or never a knockout victim, I should say, in his career. Knocked down for only the second time in his career tonight. And Delahoya deposited him on the canvas in the fourth round. When your opponent switches soft power right hand, you just stick to your left hand. The best punch in the business. Round six of a scheduled 12. Wilfredo Rivera, normally a conventional stance fighter, fighting out of a southpaw stance once again. You saw him do it so frequently in his two battles with Fernell Whitaker. He hit here, partially as a way of changing the target and making it more difficult for Oscar De La Hoya to continue to rake the gloves across his right eye. Yeah, the left jab is effective. When a guy switches, don't you switch. Stick to what's going good for you. And as Rivera goes back to the conventional stance, De La Hoya attacks and lands with left hooks and right crosses. As this fight go on, De La Hoya has been real safe. He's not allowed Rivera to hit him with any good body punches, so let him control his power. He'll still have the same power if the fight goes on and on and on. Well, in the fifth round, he barely allowed Rivera to hit him at all. Rivera threw 56 punches in the fifth round. Only three were seen to have connected by punch stat counters. De La Hoya only threw 35 punches, but he landed 19. It's a matter of accuracy and sharpness. Now, Rivera is making uh, De La Hoya go backwards, but you want him to change his footwork, make his feet come together as he back up. If you're allowing him to stand in position, that's not what you want. Make him cross his legs if he's going backwards. And the rule is to never allow your feet to catch up with one another. Well, you wonder how much more damage Rivera's corner will allow him to sustain to the right eye. If he can't find a way to be more aggressive than this and open up some more holes in De La Hoya's game, it's hard to imagine how he would win the fight. Well, that may be true, but I, I'm not sure why De La Hoya is, is taking off in this round. Is he tired? Is this something to do with his training? Oh, he hasn't done much here at all. It's a lot to do with this guy switching from southpaw. It makes you stop, start all over, rethink it, and uh, Rivera is smart like that. This has been a very passive round for De La Hoya. Rivera fighting a lot in the southpaw stance. Remember, De La Hoya was forced to go the distance twice this year against southpaws. 12 rounds against Brunel Whitaker. 12 rounds against Hector Macho Camacho. You gotta be first, right? You know, when you know you're not punched, go faint and punch. You said, you said right hand, straight, and then come to the body. Stay, stay, Throw the hard punch in the body. You have to go to the lower body. We got this round. We got this round for sure. What does it feel like, George, when they're working that cut? It's obviously so deep. They're putting the Q-tip in, et cetera. Is he feeling that? You also, it hurts a lot. It stings, as a matter of fact. But you got to overlook it. He did, when it first happened, the fight wasn't stopped. You get stronger. You get more confident because it hasn't been stopped thus far. Well, what certainly, you, you got the mentality of a warrior at this point. I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious what it, what it was he was stuffing in there. It looked like crab salad. Uh, Harold Letterman, what was it? It's Avatine. It's a, a substance that most good cut men are using now. It really, it's the best of the hemostatic agents that are used by cut men today. There's no question. That's what he's using. He's using Avatine. Harold, you're absolutely certain it's not crab salad? <laughs> absolutely certain it's Avatine. No question. You can use Avatine. You can use thrombin. You can use adrenaline 1 to 1,000. He's using Avatine. It's the best of the three.
Gil Clancy told him, don't give up any rounds, and that was pretty smart. Ooze and dies from the crowd as De La Hoya lands a couple of combinations. You know, he had the second round knockout against David Kamau, but one of the continuing questions about De La Hoya is has he carried his knockout power up to 147 pounds? Certainly, he still had it at 135. Didn't spend a lot of time at 140. Beat Chavez on cuts, and then 12-round decision against Miguel on Hel Gonzalez when he landed a lot of heavy punches. Do you think he's less of a dangerous puncher here at 147 than no, he was in the lower weight class? No doubt about it, because he's fighting guys who've taken some big shots from guys who are actually middleweight, melted down to the, to the lighter weight like that. So being hurt, but at the same time, he's not going to feel it like he's accustomed to feeling it. De La Hoya landing a right cross, right on the chin. Rivera not going anywhere. He's certainly as strong and willing as any welterweight could be, but you have to assume that those skeptics who continue to want to poke holes in the Golden Boys game will be questioning once again his knockout punch power if this one goes the distance. Yeah, the Golden Boys got a good left jab. He should use it a little more. Uh, well, you know, basically at these weights, De La Hoya is a line drive hitter, not a home run hitter. But you can score a lot of runs with line drives. You can drive in a bunch, that's for sure. Now he's allowing Rivera to get off in the body too. Now that can, that can change things as the fight goes longer and longer. Now there was a, a, a right hand flush on the jaw. Rivera didn't blink. Kind of grinned at him. Now, this is one of the states like De La Hoya. Look, I'm going to win this fight. Forget about the knockout. If it comes, good. If not, I'm just going to win. And a win is a win. Always will be. Come on, time. Okay. I want you to feel like a champion there, kid. Bouncing back and forth, paint. Don't take it here. Wait, Fred. You know what's victory? This is going to be a big victory, Wilfredo. You from come from behind. This is a big victory. He's, he's almost over. He's tired. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Here we see a, a, a very fast right left. The line drive power of Oscar De La Hoya and and later in the round, he misses a left, but follows it up with a big right hand. That was a triple. We heard Big Clancy say, act oh, like a champion in there, George. What do you think he means? Well, Clancy needs to get into his ear a lot more, so he's just throwing something. Clancy's got some answers, and I don't think he's been taken advantage of in the corner right now. They should, should allow him to have a conversation with us. Well, well he, it's his first fight with the guy. He's been there six days. Obviously, he wants to be respectful to Robert Alcazar, who is, in an everyday sense, the trainer. It's not about respect now. It's about taking care of your fighter. Forget that. Harold, how do you have it through seven? <laughs> 69, 63, six rounds to one, Oscar De La Hoya. He's landing a power shot. She just keeps backing the guy up. Well, Fred Rivera's fighting with a terrible disadvantage. I mean, it's virtually the same disadvantage as Royal Marquez fought with. He just is badly cut, and, and you know, uh, it's a fight that he's going to have a tough time winning with that blood going into his eye. I think his problem is De La Hoya more than the eye, and I have him ahead five rounds to two with that two-point round stuck in there. Yeah, he's, Rivera starting to land, jab, jab, wait for a right hand, and De La Hoya standing right in the middle. He can zero any time he wants with a straight right hand. Yeah, I can't see where the, the, the eye is, is obviously getting in his way. Punches aren't getting through his guard that easily. That would be the, the real test. Now he switched back to the softball position because he was getting hit a lot. And De La Hoya has to go back to his left jab. De La Hoya dramatically upped his punch count in round seven, throwing 62 punches. Seems to be back into a little bit more of a protective mode in this round. Rivera not in much damage against De La Hoya. So it appears that Oscar, if he wants to, can sort of safely walk his way to victory here if he just stays out of range and doesn't make any big mistakes. Well, you see Clancy told him to look like a champ, move around. It's good advice. 
I think Oscar would really like to finish this one inside of 12. And now he might have the chance to do it. Oh, that was a monstrous left hook. Rivera's got some kin to stand up to that. Or De La Hoya does have a deficiency of punching power at 147. One of the two is the case. No, you meet these champions. This Rivera is, is as much a champion as Oscar. He didn't come here to just fall down. If you got that wheel inside of you, you're not going to just be knocked down. I'm knocked out so easily. Well, he does have will and courage. Body by De La Hoya dug deep. Good right hand in the body by De La Hoya. Trickle of blood. Rivera showing a little macho oh, as he holds his hands oh, down. Oscar, get out the window. Stop, come up here. Get and up now the doctor's going to get another look at Wilfredo Rivera, and Rivera kind of waves his hands in disgust. We're not between rounds now. With Percy Richardson up there. And that's it. Technical knockout victory for Oscar De La Hoya. As soon as Howard Taylor, the doctor, got a look at Rivera without Rivera's cornerman around, the decision was made. Frankly, I didn't see that it was getting in his way as a fighter. If he was the champion, they might have let it go on. I, I, that doesn't mean they shouldn't have stopped the fight. It is a cut, but it's been bad since very early in the fight, and I don't see anything that's changed because Well, I think you could make a case that in the minute before the stoppage, Oscar started to land power shots more freely than was the case before. Now, I don't think we can complain about it. I'm just saying it wasn't necessary. It was an act of mercy. Amen. Harold Letterman, how did you have it scored up to that point? Jim, up until the eighth round, 69, 63, six rounds to one, Oscar de, uh, Oscar de la Hoya. Tim, in my mind, there was no question he was winning this fight. Uh, well, Fredo was trying to, you know, fight with, with the blood going down the side of his face. I'm sure that that cut stung very much. Oscar landed the power punches, the hard left hooks. He was winning the fight. Well, you know, one more line in defense of the stoppage here, if there's any real doubt about whether it was a good stoppage. How the hell was Rivera going to win the fight? I, I can't blame Dr. Howard Taylor for stopping a fight, nor referee Joe Cortez, who really was the only one that was allowed to stop it. Of course, the referee always listens to the doctor. I thought it was a very good stoppage, to be perfectly frank. Agreed from this quarter. And now let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Joe Cortez acting on the advice a physician at ringside, Dr. Howard Taylor, has to call a halt to the bout because of a severe laceration suffered over the right eye of the challenger. The winner by TKO victory and still the undefeated welterweight champion of the world, the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. And as has been the case in virtually every outing except the Gonzalez fight, De La Hoya largely unmarked. <laughs> He's got class, huh? After eight rounds of boxing. Final punch stat numbers. And you'll see that it was a measured attack from De La Hoya, who threw fewer punches than his opponent, but who landed at a much higher rate of accuracy and was landing mostly power shots. De La Hoya landing more than twice as many punches as Rivera, who in some rounds was landing only three or five punches. Rivera throwing 119 more. Look at the difference in connect percentage. De La Hoya, not only one of the better offensive fighters in the sport, but statistically the best defender in terms of limiting his opponent's connect percentage. Total jabs, and you can see that Rivera was pawing with the jab, but not landing it. 38 out of 288. De La Hoya's connect percentage a little bit higher, and of course, as George Foreman told you, he'd like to see Oscar throw that jab a little more. And now let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring with the winner. Thank you, Jim. Oscar, congratulations. You asked to make a statement before the interview. What is it? Well, first of all, um, with Fred Rivera, he's a, he's a strong man.